Good day, everyone. Today we are going to learn about Volvox, a chlorophycian algae. Volvox belong to the phylum Chlorophytae and class Chlorophyceae, order Volvocales and family Volvocaceae. It is a uh, freshwater algae which live together in a colony. It is found in ponds and ditches and in shallow rainwater puddles. As you can see here in this uh, right hand side panel, it is a multicellular colonial form, which is a motile synobium. It is spherical in shape and each cell of the colony has got two flagella protruding out and it is with the help of this flagella that the colony moves. Cell within the colony are functionally different. That means each cell has got an independent function and the colony reproduces by oogamy, that is sexual reproduction, in which one of the gametes is small and motile, while the other is large and non-motile. Daughter cells are initially held within the parent colony, as you can see here, some of the daughter colonies. And then this whole synobium is like a hollow ball like structure with all the cells being arranged towards the periphery. And the center part is a hollow. And whenever there is a daughter colony that is being formed, it is seen within this hollow space. Of the mother colony. The colonies have a front and a rear end that means uh, it can be seen as two poles like the north pole and the south pole of the uh, earth and uh, the northern region has got more eye spots and hence it is very active. You can see here in this picture the single cells that comprises of that all together make up the colony. And you can see here partially a daughter cell in the making. And if you look very carefully, you can see the flagella that is protruding out. And each cell in the colony is being bound together with cytoplasmic connections and all Together, they are being wrapped up in a mucilaginous covering. The colony, as I said earlier, is a hollow ball which comprises about 500 to 20,000 individual cells. And each little algae within the colony, as I said earlier, has got two flagella, and the flagella is whiplash type. You can see here an enlarged view of the Volvox colony and the daughter cells that are formed within. And in the coming video clip, you can see how the flagella helps the Volvox colony move around. Look carefully, you can see the flagellas all lashing. So these are all single cells that comprises of the synobium, Volvox colony, which is spherical in shape. You can see here two flagellas. See here a typical single cell inside the Volvox colony. So this is how the Volvox colony looks like and with the help of the flagella of the individual cells they can move around. You can see all these are daughter colonies.
So this is how the Volvox colony moves around with the help of the flagella in the individual cells. It is a concerted effort. Here you are seeing the dark field condenser objective uh, picture snapped of the Volvox colony. So speaking about the vegetative structure, each single cell of the wall box is spherical, elliptical or oval in shape. They have got two flagella and a cup-shaped chloroplast. They have a pyranoid body which produces starch and towards the anterior end near to the flagella, you can see the uh, contractile vacuoles and associated along with the chloroplast, you can see pyranoid bodies as well as towards the anterior end, you can see the eye spot. Eye spot helps in detecting the light and helps the whole colony swim towards light. And uh, as I said earlier, chloroplast is a curved cup-shaped structure. Then you can see the nucleus and other organelles. So this is a vegetative structure of a uh, Volvox cell. The cell has, once more I will repeat, the vegetative cell is almost spherical or oval in shape. It is biflagellate, two whiplash flagella are seen. Then it is covered by a mucilaginous outer layer. And then it has got a central vacuole, so contractile vacuoles just beneath the uh, flagella. Then prominent, uh, you can see a cup-shaped chloroplast. Associated with the chloroplast, you can see pyranoids. Pyranoids are nothing but the bodies which are associated with production of starch. Then you can see eye spot towards the anterior end. This eye spot helps in detecting the light. Then the nucleus. So this is the structure of the vegetative structure of a single cell of Volvox. Then how does Volvox reproduce? Volvox reproduces asexually as well as sexually. In asexual reproduction, this takes place with the help of cells at the posterior end of the colony. And these cells in the posterior end of the colony will increase in size and become 10 times larger than the normal cell. And such enlarged cells are known as gonidia. These gonidia develop numerous pyranoids and there will be around 5 to 20 gonidia in each colony and they can produce daughter colony within the parent colony. So asexual reproduction is mainly by the formation of gonidia. Gonidia are nothing but enlarged cells towards the posterior end of the colony and these Gonidia will develop numerous pyranoids and later on produces daughter colony within the parent colony. Let's just check out how the development of daughter colony proceeds by the formation of gonidium. This picture over here shows the sequential changes that happens in the Volvox colony during asexual reproduction which ultimately results in the formation of doctor colony. We will discuss each step in detail. At first, some random cell in the posterior end will start enlarging and that enlarged single cell will function as a gonidium. At a given point of time, there can be multiple number of gonidium within the colony. And this gonidia are pushed towards the interior of the colony and the nucleus or the cytoplasm within the gonidium will first undergo a longitudinal division to give rise to two cells. 
then again these two cells undergo another division which will give rise to a four cell stage these four cells again undergo division a third longitudinal division and these four cells will now become eight cells in two tires one tire will comprise of four cells which are the central cells and the four ones are peripheral and these this eight cell stage in the developmental stage of a doctor colony is known as the plakia stage what is it known as it is known as a plakia stage gradually these eight cells will get arranged in a curved plate like structure and this structure is known as the plakia stage you need to remember this uh, word plakia stage this is a eight celled condition during the development of a daughter colony in wall box you will have to remember this because it could come as a one mark question so till here what happened any random cell in the posterior side of the colony will start enlarging and gets pushed towards the interior of the colony and this enlarged cell will function as a gonadium the cellular matter of the gonadium will undergo a longitudinal division to form two cells these two cells again undergo a second division which is also longitudinal but at right angles to the first and this will result in the formation of four cells these four cells again undergo another division again a longitudinal division which will result in the formation of eight cells and these eight cells plate like arrangement is known as a plakia stage okay and once these eight cells of the plakia stage cell is formed each cell in the plakia stage will again undergo division to result in the formation of a 16 celled stage and this 16 cell stage start arranging itself in the form of a hollow sphere it will start arranging in the form of a hollow sphere as you can see here in the picture but there will be a little bit of an opening over here in the top and this opening or the aperture is called phyllopore so the sphere is open towards the exterior side and this small aperture is known as a phyllopore the next stage you can see here in this picture at all these stages till this stage the anterior end of the individual cell is facing towards the interior of the gonadium now in a uh, synobium or the wall box colony as you saw earlier in that video clip the anterior end is facing towards the periphery now how can this 16 cell stage wherein all the cells the anterior uh, part is facing towards the inside can come or can transform in such a way that the anterior end will have to face the exterior or the periphery so this is made possible by a process known as inversion of the colony it is known as inversion of the colony as you can see here and you will see in a later video clip that will be included in the lecture the the cells within the gonadium will now start getting inverted just like we can invert a plastic cover inside out the same way the cells within the gonadium will start getting inverted out through the phyllopore and once this inversion is complete you can see here in the last picture the anterior ends are now facing towards the periphery and gradually this phyllopore will get closed by the cytoplasmic connections and now you will have a complete colony that is being formed so this is how 
the initial stages of daughter colony uh, being getting formed by the formation of a gonadium so after the plakia stage the eight cells in the plakia stage will undergo longitudinal division to result in the formation of a 16 cell stage this 16 cell stage will start arranging themselves into a hollow sphere leaving a small opening towards the exterior which is known as a phyllopore at this stage the individual cells will have their anterior ends facing towards the inside of the gonadium now gradually the colony will start inverting through the phyllopore in such a way that the anterior end of each individual cell will now face the periphery of the colony gradually once the inversion is over the phyllopore gradually gets closed up to form a complete sphere so phyllopore gets closed you can see here and this is a young colony once the inversion is complete and the phyllopore is closed cells will now develop a cell wall and each cell will develop an eye spot and flagella and the cells become separated due to the development of gelatinous sheet around each cell and now the newly developed colony is known as a daughter colony gradually this daughter colony will get detached from the mother colony and fall into the hollow of the mother colony so this is how uh, in a nutshell you can say how what happens during the daughter colony formation the daughter colonies first attached uh, stays attached to the wall of the parent colony and as i said earlier later it will become free in a gelatinous matrix and then it will fall into the hollow of the mother cell in some cases even before the daughter colonies are released from the mother colony uh, those daughter colonies can again undergo reproduction to produce grand daughter colonies so in some cases you will see mother colony daughter colony as well as grand daughter colony all together in a single parent colony so the picture that you are seeing here these are all the different stages of the reproduction that is seen in uh, ball box where you can see this is a single colony then within the colony you can see daughter colonies being formed and in this picture you can see the mother colony is now expelling out the daughter colonies the daughter colonies are being released in the next video clip you can see how the wall box releases the daughter colony and in this case it is uh, aided by uh, organism known as cladozoa
you can see here gradually the daughter colony is getting released from the mother colony now that there is an opening formed in the mother colony there is chances that all the daughter colonies will get released from the mother colony and they can form their own individual colonies So you can see here almost all the colonies have been released from the mother colony and only one remains. So this happens when uh, some external uh, factors or uh, some features uh, like what you saw right here will come attack the mother colony or gradually when the mother colony becomes very old the cells become very soft and then it will start uh, disintegrating and the colonies will be uh, released. So in a nutshell, the asexual life cycle of wall box is mainly through the formation of a gonadium and uh, any positive uh, posterior end cell can function as a uh, gonadial uh, mother cell, you could say that. And uh, some random cell in the posterior end will start enlarging and the contents will first undergo a longitudinal division to give rise to two cells then each cell will again undergo a longitudinal division in the right angle to the first and form the four cell stage. These four cells again undergo another longitudinal division to result in the eight cell stage, which is known as the plakia stage. And uh, the eight cells of the plakia stage will again undergo division to form 16 cell stage. And this 16 cell stage will start. Um, arranging themselves into a sphere with just a small opening towards the exterior known as a phylopore. And once this division and arrangement is complete, the colony will start inversion uh, through the phylopore so that the anterior end of each cell will now face the exterior. Gradually, the phylopore will be closed and the cells will start producing cell wall, the gelatinous covering, the eye spot and the flagella and the daughter colony formation is complete. Once it is completed, it will detach from the mother colony and fall into the hollow of the mother colony and stay there until the mother colony is disintegrated and this uh, colony is released. So this is how asexual reproduction takes place in wall box. Speaking about the sexual reproduction, as I told you in the beginning, sexual reproduction is in wall box is oogamous type. But in some species of wall box, like wall box globata, they are monoecious or homothallic, that is both the antheridia and the ogonia, that is the male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organ are seen in the same colony. But in other volvox species like volvox aureus, uh, the male and the female reproductive organs are developed in two different colonies. That is, they are dioecious or heterophallic. Reproductive cells, again, just like the gonidia, also start their differentiation in the posterior part of the colony. And uh, here, now, the cells which enlarge lose the flagella and start forming the male and the female reproductive organs are known as a gametangia. The male reproductive cells are called antheridia or androgonidia and the female reproductive cells are called ugonia or gynogonidia. So just as in the asexual reproduction, any cell in the posterior end of the colony will function as precursor for a gametangia and these cells will enlarge 
lose the flagella and get changed into what is known as gametangia. And the gametangia, which get transferred to the male reproductive cells uh, and gradually get to know or get to develop as an antheridia or androgonidia. Likewise, the female reproductive cells are called ugonia or gynogonidia. So why is the sexual reproduction called as ugamous? It's because one of the cells, that is the male cell usually, will be smaller in size and in this case it is motile, while the female cell is immotile and will be larger in size. So let's first check out the development of antheridium, which is a male gametangium, which gives rise to an antheridium. So just as we discussed earlier in the formation of gonidium and the ductal colony, here also one of the cells in the posterior end will enlarge to form the male gametangia. And in Volvox, antheridia are produced inside male gametagia in large numbers. The protoplasm, you can see here how the changes are happening, which ends in the formation of anthrozoids or the male gametes. The protoplasm of the gametangium will first divide uh, longitudinally to form two cells. Then they undergo a series of divisions to result in the formation of multiple number of cells which are arranged in a bowl shaped pattern and it could be 64 to 128 male cells as you can see over here and each protoplasmic piece is differentiated into a conical anthrozoid or the spermatozoid and the anthrozoid with the spermatozoid is biflagellate. So you can see here this is the gametangium, the male gametangium, inside which the cellular material will undergo a series of divisions to result in about 64 to 128 male cells. And these male cells gradually get converted into or differentiated into the anthrozoids or the spermatozoids. And each anthrozoid, as I said earlier, they are motile and they function as a male gamete and they are biflagellated structures. So the development of ugonium also is similar to this with some differences. The ugonium, the egg or the oosphere develops within the female gametangium. The female gametangium, like the male gametangium, starts their development from any random cell in the posterior end. It will start enlarging and become a flask shaped structure as you can see here in the picture. The protoplasm here will not undergo any division but get transformed itself into a single egg or the oosphere. And now this is known as an ugonium. So during antheridium formation, the cellular contents underwent series of divisions to give rise to multiple anthrozoids. But in the case of ugonium, the cellular contents does not undergo any division. Instead, they will enlarge, round off, and form a single egg or the oospear. Oospear, as you can see here, will have a short beak like point which assist in the entry of the anthrozoid or you could say that it is the entry point for the anthrozoids to penetrate into the ugonium and effect fertilization. So a mature oosphere or the ovum you can see here is a rounded or flask shaped structure. The egg is a uninucleate structure and there is a beak to the flask which functions as a receptive spot wherein the anthrozoids, as you can see here, they can identify the oosphere and that is a weak point in the oosphere or the ugonium through which the anthrozoids make their entry into the female cell 
and fertilize a female uh, nucleus to result in a zygote. Zygote will now form some ornamentations, some cell wall will be secreted around it and then it gets transformed. So during sexual reproduction, once the oogonium is ready, the anthrozoids are ready, now it is the time for fertilization. The sperm gets dissociated from the male colony and they can swim towards the female colony using the biflagellate structure. The sperm will penetrate into the female colony and fertilize the egg located in the ogonia. It is through the uh, receptive spot as we saw earlier. Once fertilization is over, as I said earlier, the zygote will start secreting some protective layers so that it can withstand the harsh conditions or it can withstand unfavorable conditions. So in sexual reproduction, male and the female gametangia could be seen either in the same colony if it is monoecious, and in the case of dioecious condition, they are seen in different colonies. The gametangia is usually formed from some random cells at the posterior end. If it is a male reproductive organ producing gametangia, it is anthrozoid, sorry, um, antheridium or androgonidium, and the female reproductive structures are known as ogonium. Then, as we saw earlier, antheridial formation takes place when a cell starts enlarging. The cellular contents undergo a series of division. Here also, once the division is complete, the whole colony will undergo an inversion just as we saw during the sexual reproduction. But only difference is that here no cell wall formation and no colony formation. Instead, each cell will get transformed itself into a male gamete or the anthrozoid. They will have now the uh, flagella which will help them to swim towards the female gamete. And then female gametangium, Again, a flask shaped structure is being formed, but here no cellular division, no division of the cellular component takes place. Instead, the cellular component will get transformed itself into an egg or a oosphere. And uh, there is an eye spot through which the anthrozoids can enter into the ugonium and effect fertilization. After fertilization, the zygote will secrete protective layers so that it can withstand harsh environmental conditions. Normally, uh, ugonium will secrete certain chemicals. That is what attracts the anthrozoids to swim towards the ugonium. And multiple number of anthrozoids will be coming attracted towards the ogonium, but only a single anthrozoid is allowed to enter into the uh, ogonium and effect fertilization to form the zygote. And once the zygote is formed, it will now get transformed itself into what is known as the mesospore and the endospores. It will form uh, the wall layers. The wall contains a nuclear pigment hematochrome and this is what imparts the red color to the zygote. The zygote may undergo a little bit of dormancy and uh, once the climatic conditions are favorable they will start germinating. The niploid nucleus of the zygote will now undergo meiotic division and form four haploid cells. So once favorable condition has returned, what will happen? The zygote will undergo meiotic division and form four haploid cells. 
the outer two layers of the zygote will burst open. That means the wall layers will burst open and the inner layer will come oozing out as a vesicle. Inner layer will come oozing out as a vesicle and the four haploid cells will now migrate into the vesicle. So the zygote after secreting all the wall layers will rest for some time till the climatic conditions are favorable for germination. Once there is favorable condition, the nucleus within the zygote, which is now in a diploid condition, will undergo meiotic division to result in the formation of four haploid cells. So once this meiotic division is over, the outer wall layers of the zygote will burst open and the inner layer will come out as a vesicle. Meanwhile, the four haploid cells will now migrate into the vesicle. And then finally comes out. So this is what happens in the life cycle of wall box. And uh, you can see here asexual reproduction is by the formation of gonadium, wherein a single cell of the posterior end will enlarge to form the gonadium. It will now divide, undergo multiple division. Then eight cell stage is formed that you should remember. It is a plakia stage. Eight then gets transformed into 16 cell stage. And then gradually it will undergo a process known as inversion so that the anterior end faces towards the periphery. Once that is completed, the phylopore gets closed. Each cell will start forming its own eye spot and the flagella cell wall formation, gelatinous formation, and it gets converted into a colony itself. In the case of uh, sexual reproduction, it is oogamous. Male and female gametangia will be formed. In the male gametangium, anthrozoids will be formed. And in the female gametangium, oogonium is formed. And uh, the anthrozoids will fertilize the oogonium to result in a diploid zygote. Diploid zygote will secrete multiple layers of uh, wall layers like mesospore, endospore, etc. And it will undergo a period of rest. Once favorable condition is back, these, uh, the nucleus within the zygote will undergo meiotic division to give rise to four haploid cells. And uh, gradually it will break open the wall layers and come out, and each cell will function as a uh, zoo spore which germinate to form a colony. So this is the life cycle of wall box. So to start with wall box is a haploid uh, cell and the only diploid stage that is seen in the life cycle of wall box is in the form of a zygote. So the life cycle here in Volvox is said to be haplontic because majority of the cells in the life cycle are in a haploid condition as you can see here. And the only diploid cell that is found in the cycle and in the life cycle of Volvox is a zygotic cell. So this is an example for a haplontic life cycle. So I will leave you with this uh, video where you can see how the inversion is happening and how it is uh, reproducing. So enjoy. The ultimate expression of Volvocalian evolution is Volvox, whose beautiful colonies are large enough to be visible with the naked eye. The eye of the needle gives a sense of scale. Each colony is a sphere consisting of hundreds of tiny somatic cells and a few much larger reproductive cells called gonidia. Most gonidia in this sample have already started forming embryos, so individuals may contain several generations of colonies. Starting with this two-celled embryo, we can see how the gonidia arise. During one particular cycle of division, certain cells divide unequally. 
a couple are indicated by arrows. The larger cells thus arising become the new gonidia, and they lie at first on the outside of the embryo. They stop dividing, while the somatic cells continue synchronized divisions until the full complement of cells is reached. Inversion takes about 40 minutes. Once the embryos have inverted and enlarged, the parental colony softens and releases the new colonies, after which the somatic cells of the parent colony soon die. So, one remarkable result of evolution in the vulvocalis was the creation of a major distinction between somatic and reproductive cells. The gonidia of volvox undergo a similar but longer sequence of cell divisions. This large gonidial nucleus is undergoing its first division. Chromosomes are difficult to see. After cleavage, the second mitoses soon follow, but the chromosomes are invisible. As before, the daughter nuclei are all on the inside of the forming embryo colony. This embryo colony is going through its many cycles of division. The earliest divisions leave a cross-shaped slit in one side of the colony, on the bottom right in this example, and the slit remains open during the cycles of division. This feature is called the phyalopore, and it stretches open to accommodate the movements of inversion. Inversion in volvox takes about 45 minutes and is brought about by a wave of flexing passing through the layer of small somatic cells. They elongate and one end constricts due to the integrated activity of the cell's microtubule and actin cytoskeleton. Flexing is generated when the shape changes in individual cells are precisely coordinated across the colony. So that's it for the day. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening.